What's up, everybody? Welcome to a special short little version of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. I am your host, Clickwood. And today, guys, what I want to talk about is specific to fantasy football, but it is in regards to the trade that just happened in the NFL this afternoon. Percy Harvin of the Seattle Seahawks has been traded to the New York Jets for a conditional mid-round pick, somewhere between a second and a fourth round pick. I'm assuming that it has to do with production. So with Percy Harvin, it might have to do with how many games he actually ends up playing for these guys. But people are already asking me, what do you do with Percy Harvin if you own him in fantasy football? Well, guys, I think that this really could go either way. Uh, the reality of the situation is that he is going to a team that has a significantly worse quarterback position. So Russell Wilson, probably most people would agree right now, uh, pretty much a, a top 10 quarterback. Uh, from a fantasy standpoint himself, he kind of teeters on being relevant, to be honest with you, in, in a lot of games. I mean, this past week, he was really, really bad against the Cowboys. But the thing is, is that Russell Wilson has the physical abilities. We've seen him make some great throws. He has a big, big arm, and he can get the ball to Percy Harvin. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out that way in Seattle, and I don't really know what the situation is. I don't really understand why they haven't been able to get him the football. Uh, this past week, I think he caught three passes against the Cowboys for zero yards, and then they ran him out of the backfield three times, and I believe he gained negative one yard. So in the entire game, six touches, negative one yard. Now, granted, Seattle's offense, it kind of you know, it, it kind of goes game to game. You know, you have the the really big games that they put up, and then they have the stinkers where they can barely struggle to get by the Rams or, you know, whatever bad team that they're playing. And it, it really is an interesting situation because Percy Harvin, you would think, would be a major, major part of that offense. But he really hasn't been. Now, granted, last year he missed basically the entire season with an injury, did end up playing in the Super Bowl. I think he played in like a half of football before that. Um, but basically... He was irrelevant last year. So when he stepped onto the field this year, everybody was like, oh man, Russell Wilson's taking that next step forward. Now he's got a big name target in Percy Harvin, and it just really hasn't been that way. So when they do trade him now to the New York Jets, he's going to be playing with Geno Smith. Well, most likely Geno Smith anyway. Geno's struggled, although what I will say about Geno Smith is that despite the fact that his team lost this past Thursday night against the New England Patriots, that might have been one of the best times that we've ever seen him play. He looked very, very good in that game for the most part. Now, granted, he did have a couple plays where he, yeah, not so much. But still, at the end of the day, though, Geno Smith looked pretty good. You can see that he was making some advancements. You can see that he wasn't forcing the ball. I think I heard a stat that somebody said that that was the first game that Geno Smith has ever lost in the NFL where he didn't throw an interception. So, you know, he's making he's making some improvements. Now that he does have a player like Percy Harvin in the offense, it should be very, very interesting to see how they end up using him. Now, because they traded for him, I actually have decent expectations here. I do believe that Percy Harvin is going to touch the ball 10 or more times per game for the, the New York Jets. Whereas when he was on the Seahawks, he was lucky to be touching it five times a game. I don't know what the situation is. I haven't really examined why he wasn't getting the ball in Seattle, but I do know that when you make a trade midseason and you're a coach like Rex Ryan, who's kind of on the hot seat right now with the start that his team has had and the lack of success that they've had in recent years, you do need to make those blockbuster moves to try and save your job. And that's what he's doing here with Percy Harvin. I think that Rex Ryan is going to want to get the ball to Percy Harvin as often as possible. I do believe that they're going to use him a lot like Seattle did in terms of, you know, lining him up at wide receiver. He's going to start for them. I can't imagine a situation where he wouldn't. He does have also a better option across from him with Eric Decker. Eric Decker is a borderline top 10 wide receiver in the NFL right now. Um, and to have him across pulling attention away from Percy Harvin, having quality running backs in the backfield uh, like Chris Ivory and Chris Johnson when he decides to actually play, uh, I do think that that is going to mean good things for Percy Harvin, despite the fact that he's clearly taking a downgrade at quarterback. So Harvin's value overall, in my opinion, goes up with this trade. And I know that's going to sound crazy to people. And the nice thing, if you're on a, if you're in a fantasy football league where you don't own Percy Harvin and he's somebody that you're interested in, 
you might be able to play off of the emotions of the person that currently owns Percy Harvin in your league. Somebody that is frustrated in the lack of success that he had in Seattle, and they look at this situation and they say, okay, now he's going to the Jets and he's going to have a terrible quarterback throwing him the ball. Let's prey on those people. Let's steal Percy Harvin for what would likely be his lowest possible value at this point. Now, keep in mind, guys, he is going to unfortunately have to go through what is essentially two bye weeks here in the coming weeks. Now, he does have, it's very unlikely that he's going to play this week. I, I actually don't know if he technically can play this week. Um, but the other thing is that they still do have their bye that the Jets have to go through. So, it is unfortunate that he already went through the buy when he was in Seattle. So technically speaking, he will actually have essentially three buys this year. Uh, but in their other games, I do believe that Percy Harvin is going to be very, very useful from a fantasy standpoint. I, like I said, I expect him to touch the ball 10 times a game. I hope that this helps you guys. I would definitely target him right now in your fantasy leagues as a player that you can buy on the cheap and not have to give up a whole lot for. And uh, hopefully you can get some better production than what he's been doing for you early in the year. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, if you enjoyed it, make sure you press that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this situation. Are you excited to see Percy Harvin as a New York Jet? Or are you a little bit worried in the fact that he is going to be playing with Geno Smith? Uh, thank you guys so much. Like I said, I do appreciate all the support. If you're new to the channel, make sure you press the subscribe button and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.